Historically, privacy has been associated with physical access. Your home is your castle. Your person is inviolate. Search warrant is needed to gain access. Those are physical mechanisms rooted in the history of law. But in an electronic world, we need different stories. We have to find some different analogs that respect the privacy of individuals, provide security for their electronic personas, but aren't necessarily rooted in physical possession because data flows in a global way rapidly and easily. What we have to do is work through all of those issues and understand that they are an interesting confluence really of three things, technology, because there are hardware, software, and mathematical issues about how we define privacy and identity and security. There are policy issues and legal issues around acceptable behavior, and that's sort of a global agreement uh, and region-specific cultural differences. Uh, and then finally, there are the idiosyncrasies of humans and the fact that we have widely divergent ex expectations. Some are cultural, some are age-specific. Uh, what a teenager might find acceptable to share and what I might find acceptable to share are different things. Now, that teenager may regret it when they're my age that they shared those things. That's a different story. But there are widely divergent cultural expectations, and we have to respect that diversity worldwide. We have to respect the policy issues around those, and we also have to continue to invent the technological solutions that enable those diversities. So one thinks about on-premise clouds, private clouds versus public clouds. There are different dynamics about security because the locus of control and responsibility for security shifts. If I'm operating infrastructure, I assume the responsibility for security. If Microsoft is operating my computing infrastructure in the cloud, Microsoft is assuming responsibility for more of the security. And whether I enter at infrastructure as a service or platform as a service, software as a service, there's a different mix of security responsibility that exists in each of those places. What that means in the cloud space is Microsoft takes responsibility for assuring the users of our cloud services that we are providing security. And that has to be true both when we build on-premise cloud infrastructure and cloud appliances, and it certainly has to be true when we make available hosted services and infrastructure. And that's why this whole stack matters we think about, in a virtualized world, how do we provide the hardware support that we can attest that the virtual machines we're running are, in fact, the, the Windows VMs that we've asserted, that they've been uncorrupted by viruses. Uh, and that's true at every level. So we work on every piece of that, that equation. It means looking at the next generation of TPMs, the so-called TPM Next, how we drive global standards in that space, because that is the base cryptographic support how we work with all the hardware vendors, standards bodies, governments worldwide to define that capability is a piece of the story. Just as the work on cryptographic standards and the ability to define those and have public scrutiny so that one can uh, verify that they're not back doors, that one can escape around the, the advertised protocol, all of that engagement is part of both the research, the testing, and, and the product transition process. So we both build the, the basic components, but we test them at scale and we look at that deployment because in the end, when we deploy cloud services, Microsoft reputation is on the line. So it's not just a business guarantee, it's, it's, a, it's a, a business imperative for Microsoft because the key to cloud services is providing that assurance of security. And that's not just a perception issue, it has to be a reality issue.